Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where today I want to talk about the the cold temperatures out in Chicago. A lot of people have been coming up to me saying, Dave, what the heck is going on? First, her sells off 20,000 EVs. Second, we've got these dead robots in Chicago where, you know, all the Teslas, they couldn't charge. And I mean, what is going on? And people are asking me, what do you think about this? What are you doing? And look, I'm not one of these guys that says, um, you have to have an EV or you got to, you know, go out and buy one right now. I mean, we're just trying to educate people about what are the pros and cons of having an EV. I think having an EV, it sort of outweighs the cons. Forget about politics. I don't care about that. I like the way these cars drive. But what happened this week is real. I want to get into it. And I kind of want to summarize um, a video that Kyle put up last night. Here it is, January 18th. It's my birthday. I'm heading out to go skiing with my daughter, Katie, and uh, in, um, in Whistler, British Columbia. And I thought I would make this video here before I get on the plane and edit it up. Um, and I'm also going to be um, discussing why I believe, if you can, you should charge at home with a level two. Kyle went through four statements in his video last night. I want to tackle each one of those in this video. So let's get into it. Today's video is sponsored by RH EV Char. This is a new charger that's making an entrance into the marketplace. I decided to actually take a look at this unit. And why? Because this unit has something unique. Right on the, on the actual unit itself, it has a screen. So the first point that Kyle made is that um, colder temperatures elongate the length of time it takes, is that an oxymoron? First of all, I love the fact to use the word elongate because, you know, is this elongate that's going on here? But uh, listen, if you don't precondition your battery, then it's going to take longer to charge your car. So what you need to think about is that the optimal temperature that your battery should be at, if it's super cold out and it's been cold soaked overnight, the best thing you can do is precondition your battery before you charge. Because if you don't do that, what will happen is as you're, as you, when you plug in, assuming that the dispenser is operable, which has been a little bit questionable this week, uh, even in Tesla's case, due to these colder temperatures or maybe some other issues that are going on in Chicago. Um, but it's not uncommon to find chargers that don't work. And we've talked about CCS and the move to NACs and all of that. Um, but if you can, the best thing you can do is precondition your battery so you get it to the optimal temperature so that it can actually receive the, um, the most amount of energy when you get in. If you don't precondition your battery and you plug in, what's going to happen is the energy is going to just be used to heat up the battery before it can actually store energy in the battery. I mean, this is just the simple fact of battery chemistry today. Unfortunately, cold weather, they affect um, the way with which a battery can accept and charge at the optimal speed. So if you if you don't know what battery preconditioning is, or if you're not sure if your car is um, capable of doing that, comment below, tell us what car you've got, and we'll educate you on how to do it. With a Tesla, all you got to do is put in the destination that you're, you're heading to, and the car will automatically precondition the battery uh, so that you get there and you'll have, hopefully have uh, the right optimal temperature. Now, you have to precondition long enough in these colder temperatures and man, I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's definitely a challenge. This is not for everyone. Um, gas cars, a lot of people say, Dave, why would you ever drive an electric vehicle? Um, when things like this are going on, why do you need the pain? Look, it's an, it's, it's an edge case, but it is a real edge case, something to think about. So today we're going to get into, uh, evaluating a new charger that I just received. And, uh, I want to tell you all about it. All right, so I just finished unboxing this unit. I will say it was extremely well packaged. Uh, again, this is the EVC WB50. What this is, is uh, the unit itself looks really nice. I can't wait to fire this up and see what the screen looks like. The cable looks super thick, and I'm going to be really curious to see how malleable it is in the cold. Um, I've used other units which 
The cable is, is relatively firm, but this is a plug-in for NEMA 1450. Very solid. It appears to be very solid. It comes with a, a wall mount right here, two RFID cards, all the hardware you need, including the screwdriver, a template, a user manual for installation and operation, an actual, a separate user manual for the app itself, a mounting plate, and a template for the actual device that you can mount the, the uh, put the cable uh, management system on. It also includes an amperage label uh, for the unit as well. I like what I see here, and I'm going to go put this into the garage, get it all mounted up, and then uh, later on in this video, we'll fire it up and see how it works. More and more um, pro drivers, whether they're Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, or what have you, are driving EVs today. And a lot of them don't understand that they need to plan for large, longer charging times when things get cold out. And a lot of them think that, hey, listen, you know, if I don't have a ride or if I just want to eat lunch, I'll just stay on the hook until I'm at 100%. And so, you know, a lot of the pro drivers are causing jam ups at, uh, at these charging stations. And the, when we're talking about DC fast charging. So again, you know, the, the real issue here is if you can charge at home and level two, now level two, you're only going to be getting about 30 miles an hour or 35 miles an hour at the optimal temperature. And DC fast charging definitely has its place, um, for these, for these drivers. But, you know, it's important to respect what they're doing because they're earning a living. Um, this is how they get gas. But I've seen so many of these pro drivers actually, um, you know, sitting on the hook until 100% or not being necessarily respectful of someone who's on a road trip that just needs to get a little bit of juice in order to continue on their journey. So that's causing some issues and, and log jams at these, at these EV charging, DC fast charging as well. All right. So first things first, really simple installation here. Of course, my little, my little pup, Bailey, she loves to help me with anything. If I'm cooking or putting level two wall chargers on the wall. And, uh, you know, I've got my NEMA 1450 right over here and this unit will plug right into that. You just don't install the, the, uh, the wall bracket and, and then the unit just slips on really just, uh, just sort of from the top down and it slides down. So let's get that thing on there. All right. So you can see I've mounted the unit right here onto the wall. And I've also got the cable management system that I'm about to wind that cable right around there. The RH EV Char. This is the unit that I have just installed on the wall. I'm about to plug it in and see what happens. One thing that I would like to see though is on this mounting, uh, this little plastic mounting device, it's pretty solid, but it doesn't have a swivel for the handle. So you can see that the handle itself it's kind of getting in the way of the garage door. I probably mounted it a little too close to the garage door. I'm probably going to move that. But uh, I've seen other units which actually, when you plug in the, uh, the J1772, they actually shift down. And this one doesn't do it. It's kind of a fixed mount. No big deal. But uh, let's go ahead and plug this unit in and see what happens. I'm excited here to see this, uh, see this screen. All right, so let's plug it in. Now, we're going to see... This is showtime here, folks. Let's see what happens. Plugging it in. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Now, there's an app that this unit comes with, which I'm going to download on my phone right now and also get this unit connected to my Wi-Fi network here in the house. But let's go on to point number three. So what happened in Chicago this week was real. Um, Tesla had some down chargers, but I can tell you that when Kyle went over to the test, I think he was in Oak Brook. I'm not sure exactly which location he was in, but, um, he said that the Tesla technicians were on site and, uh, and apparently got them quickly up and running and the media jumped all over this. You know, this is, this is a terrible thing. How could you have all these down Teslas? And it didn't look good. It looked like a Tesla graveyard there. And then you had sort of on the other side, you had sort of a lot of the fanboys saying, oh, this is fine. This is just an anomaly or whatever. And I know that in Kyle's video, one of the things he, he pointed out was, um, you know, the truth is somewhere kind of in between. I mean, problems do happen very rarely with Tesla. 
uh, Tesla. I saw Sawyer Merritt last night on CNBC talking about, I think the uptime is 99.5% of the time. Um, Tesla's supercharging network is is very reliable. As a matter of fact, that's why most of the manufacturers have have sort of abandoned the whole CCS protocol okay. and are going towards a uh, to the NACS uh, network. Um, and it's really just about reliability. And Tesla is super good at this. Yes, they did have problems, but they got it up and running fast. Um, the other networks, and he was checking them out, they weren't so good. And historically, they haven't been good, even when it's warm out. And so there are real challenges when you're driving a non-Tesla, um, a CCS car, if you're road tripping. Now, if you're just daily driving, we've talked about this, um, you know, whatever it is, you, you've gotten whatever, 50, 60, 80 miles a day. Just just put one of these level twos in your house, charge every day at home, and then use the, the, the DC fast charging network for um, you know, for when you're going on the road trips. So, um, yeah, that's point number three. A lot of broken chargers out there. Very few Tesla broken chargers. But this week in Chicago, there were. It was kind of a perfect storm of the cold weather um, and the news media jumping all over it and saying, wow, look at this. Not untrue. There were problems this week, and we will continue to have problems. But, uh, you know, you got to sort of take it with a grain of salt in terms of, you um, the long term, or I should say, how often are there that many problems with, uh, especially Tesla? Not that often, to be honest. At least that's my take. Chime in and comment below if you disagree with me. All right. So before we actually plug in and charge, I'm just going to take you through a little journey on the app itself. Uh, basically, what I did was I downloaded the app from the Apple App Store. I'm an iPhone guy. Um, I connected the, the unit to Bluetooth um, and then also to the Wi-Fi network in my in my house here. Once you configure the network, you can plug in and start charging. And some other things that you can do, you can uh, hook up RFID cards to it if you wanna have sort of security so no one can actually charge on your unit if it's outside, for example, or in a place where anybody could do it. If they have the RFID card, they're gonna need that in order to charge. I like that feature a lot just from a security standpoint. Um, share management is something that um, you can actually authorize other people to activate the app um, and activate the charger using the app, which is really good. So the fourth point that Kyle made is that in Chicago, the networks are already strained, not enough of them for the amount of cars that are going around, going around and driving today. Um, the manufacturers keep selling a lot of these EVs, although the EV sales are down and there's some great bargains out there. Um, it's a buyer's market, whether it's used or new. So um, please uh, reach out if you're looking to buy one and you're not sure how. I'll, I'll be sure to try and help you, give you some advice. A lot of people do. Um, but when you add in the longer charging times, that it takes when when you're actually charging in the cold weather. The more cars that are now on the road, EVs that are on the road, and then on top of that, broken chargers due to the cold weather or maybe not proper maintenance. I mean, that's kind of like the perfect storm. And uh, I, I'll tell you what, when I saw the news, news reports this week, um, it's hard to argue with what they were saying. There's a lot of truth in what they were saying. But again, you gotta balance it off. All right, so I just plugged in the ELR, uh, for those of you who don't know what this is, is basically a Chevy Volt. It's a, it's a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Uh, just picked this up, really cool car. And you can see that I have the amperage set in the car to 12 amps, and it looks as though 13 is going out of this unit. And I've been charging now for two minutes and I have taken a whopping 0.1 kilowatt hours of energy. So this is really nice. Uh, one thing that was interesting was that the unit was, was dark when I plugged in and I just tapped it and then, uh, and then the screen came to life. So that was good. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty psyched about this. I think I'm gonna unplug here and plug it into the Tesla Model Y and see what it does there. This will go up to 50 amps if you've got a, a circuit that can handle that, um, which I do, but my cars can't pull that much. So I've got it set to 40. I may even, to be honest, I may even slow that down a little bit um, from a day in day out standpoint, just run it at 32 amps. I don't think charging fast, at least in our use case, is needed. But boy, I tell you what, I like this I like this screen. 
that shows you how many kilowatt hours you're getting and how much time you've been charging for. Of course, you can get that all on the app. Some of the screens that, that you see here, as far as the, the app itself, um, really gives you some nice, some nice uh, information, statistics. I would imagine that as I use this from uh, you know more and more, I'll be able to look at the history of some charging and really pull up a lot of data. I love data. So look, easy installation, um, really good. I love the display. That's that to me is is a game changer from what I'm normally used to, which is just a, a level two, which is just with a little LED light on it that says you're charging or not charging. This is value add to me. I like it, folks. Yeah, it says it's done over there, which is good. And what I want to do is unplug and see how stiff this cable is compared to others that I've used. So let's let's check this out because it's super cold out here. Tell you what, I think it feels a little more malleable, which is good. Yeah, the cable's, it's pretty stiff. <laughs> it's definitely pretty stiff. Um, a big challenge because it's super cold out here. But uh, anyway, good unit. Uh, I'm psyched I, I put this thing up and I think I'm going to be using this. Fact is, this Model Y will charge at 48 amps and this unit can put out 50. So this is great compared to the other one that I've used in the past. It only actually uh, put out uh, 40 amps. So now personally, I probably would dial it back unless I need to go a little faster and not, not uh, charge quite as fast. But uh, yeah, good unit, really. Um, look, hopefully in this video today, what I've been able to do is show you or tell you my thoughts about this charging situation that happened this week. It wasn't good. And we're going to continue to see growing pains in the future. Just checking to make sure my, my bag is still down there, which it is. Um, and, uh, and look, you know, if you're not ready to get an EV, don't, right? That'll leave more charging spaces open for us. But if you're thinking about driving professionally, um, you've got to realize that cold weather, like anything, if you've got a cell phone, you leave it outside, you plug it in, it's not going to charge as fast as it would if in, in the warm weather. And also keep in mind that if you're charging your car, it's gonna charge very relatively quickly from zero to 50%, and then from 60 or 70% all the way to 100%, it's gonna take a lot longer. So plan your trips out accordingly. Don't abuse the system. Be respectful of others if they're trying to make their way through, um, you know, on a road trip or what have you. <clears throat> and above all else, if you live locally, Leave the DC fast chargers to those that really need them and install a level two like the unit that I showed here today. It's a fantastic unit. There's so many out there on the market. This just happens to be one that kind of caught my eye because of the screen. And uh, I was actually hopeful that the charging cable may have been a little bit more malleable in the cold weather. But this morning, it was cold. I mean, it was 21 degrees out and you can, you know, the, the cable was pretty stiff. All right, so everyone, thanks again for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave. Hopefully, I've been able to share my perspectives on this sort of, um, Elon Gate. I don't know if I, if I should even say that. Kyle just like typed it. I thought it was so funny when I read that. I don't even think he meant to say that. Maybe he did. I don't know. But uh, keep in mind, this has been a tough week for electric vehicles and charging, especially in Chicago. The news media picked up on it. You've got all these like, oh, there's a lot of politics going on, right? The Republicans say EVs are bad. The Democrats are saying EVs are good. I don't care about any of that stuff. I just, like I said, I like the way they drive. But keep in mind, there are real challenges out there. So if you can get a level two, consider the one that I featured here in this video. Best of luck to you. And as always, please reach out. I'm going skiing in Whistler. It's my birthday and I can't wait to get on the plane. Have a good one, everybody. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. All right, so I'm all loaded up, ready to go. Uh, empty flight, look at this. Nobody's here, this is great. Have a good one, everyone.